the pleasure of attending a planning commission meeting and a couple of housekeeping notes. First, if you could silence your cell phones, we'd greatly appreciate it. And after we call the roll and approve the minutes, the way it works is uh, city staff will present on an item. Once they're done with their presentation, it goes just to the planning commission for technical questions. Once we're done with technical questions, we open it up to the audience for a public comment or question. If you have something to say, please step up to the microphone and state your name and address so we have it for the minutes. After that, after everybody's had their opportunity, we'll close public comment, bring it back to the commission for discussion and a vote. With that, let's call the roll. Kathleen Prop, Here. Mamadou Koulibaly. Lindsay Erickson. Here. Michael Ford. Here. John Hintz. Present. John Kiefer. Here. Lori Palmieri. Here. Thomas Perry. Here. Justin Mitchell. Here. Eric Kroth. Thomas Foytek. Here. Moving on to the approval of the minutes from January 7th. Do we have any additions, corrections, deletions to those minutes? Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right. Minutes are approved. Item number one is the grant privilege in the street for a groundwater monitoring well at the north 100 to 200 blocks of East Packer Avenue. Any site inspections today? Okay, none. We chair and not the chair. We accept the staff report as part of the record. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a privilege in the street request uh, for the north terrace area of East Packer Avenue, approximately the 100 to 200 blocks. Uh, the Wisconsin DNR is contracted with General Engineering Company to oversee the installation of a one, a, a one two-inch monitoring well uh, within the terrace area. Up on the screen, I have an aerial photograph showing um, the subject site with the orange outline and hatching. Uh, the purpose of the monitoring well is to define the extent of groundwater contamination emanating from the Witski Electric property uh, across the street here. Um, the exact location is not has not been identified yet. Uh, on the day of the well installation, uh, the uh, applicant will be uh, boring two test holes somewhere on Witski property to determine the uh, flow direction of the groundwater. And then once they determine that, then they'll have a um, better uh, location of where it's going to be uh, within the terrace. Uh, it is anticipated that it would be east of uh, the Sashkosh Corporation up here, one of their plants, but they're expecting it to be somewhere east of this driveway. Um, based on the findings of the monitoring well, uh, there may be additional wells required. Uh, they won't know until they start getting water samples from uh, this, this well. Um, with this area having a, a large area defined for the project extents, they would not have to come back uh, for an additional privilege. This is going to pretty much cover uh, any future well installations, the only requirement would be they would have to coordinate with the Department of Public, Public Works and obtain um, any necessary permits for uh, uh, installation of additional wells. Uh, the applicant states that the wells will be installed as to not disrupt, disrupt tra traffic on Packer Avenue. The wells themselves will consist of a two inch PVC pipe with a 10 foot slotted screen within an eight inch borehole and uh, approximately 30, 13 feet deep and then capped with a cast iron cap uh, flush mounted to the surface. Uh, it's anticipated this investigation will take two years and then afterwards the wells will be abandoned per uh, Wisconsin DNR, US EPA and City of Oshkosh requirements. Uh, the petitioner will be coordinating with the Department of Public Works to ensure no conflicts with city utilities and staff is recommending approval of the uh, privilege request as, as uh, presented. And this is just a street, uh, street view showing the terrace area. This is the westernmost portion and then the eastern portion. And just to give you an idea of what the site looks like, and that is what was submitted by the applicant. Uh, there are 13 conditions. The list continues to grow, and we're actually adding two more conditions. All of these are found in your staff report besides these two here. Uh, we thought it was prudent that the uh, applicant <coughs> should notify the uh, property, o property owner adjacent to the terrace uh, two days prior to construction just to let them know that the work's going to be going on there so they don't schedule lawn mowing or anything like that during the well installation. And then the second condition that we are adding is um, uh, the petitioner or representative party um, uh, what is this was thrown at me at the last second 
Oh, um, that engineering uh, installation shall occur with engineering staff present to inspect and ensure that the location's in, a, in the uh, location where it's supposed to go. That it? That's it. All right, technical questions. Go ahead, Justin. Um, to your knowledge, if they do identify um, groundwater pollution, what, what's, what's the next step? Or is there an additional public notice, or does it in, you know, have broader implications? Justin, do you know any uh, ramifications if they discover contamination across the street? Not offhand. It would go to the DNR to, to figure out what the contamination contaminations are and how, what they would need to do for it. I think part of um, the, the privilege are also requesting that they notify us so that we're aware, but it would be any of the requirements for notification would be for the DNR to, to do. Sure. There. <clears throat> uh, this is a two-part question. Um, so first off, uh, what prompted this um, by Witzkis? Is it just the fact that they have underground storage tanks? Um, and then does it, do these wells also check, and I don't even know, are there underground storage tanks at Oshkorp as well that this would monitor? This investigation doesn't cover Oshkosh Corp's property. There must be some kind of history where the DNR was made aware that there were underground storage tanks at some point, and maybe some evidence of contamination. So now they're trying to de define the uh, the extent of the, the underground water or the contam or con contamination plume emanating from the site. So there must have been some fore foreknowledge of of contamination there. That wasn't uh, address or that wasn't part of their narrative. So or what the, what the uh, how this was originated. So are there underground storage tanks at the site adjacent Oshkosh as well? Corp? I don't know. Other questions from the commission? Just ask one Go ahead, John. Um, <clears throat> because it's, it said because they have to determine the, the groundwater flow, is that why it's on both sides of the driveway there? Is because they aren't sure if it's more northerly or more northeast? Correct. Or? Yeah, uh, based on the findings of the test borings, you're trying to cover you know, all their grounds. Uh, all, uh, cover all their bases and then you know the groundwater flow could flow to the north northwest or northeast so that's why they defined a, a broad area like okay. that so they're covered do you have a map of the plume no I think that part of the reason for this request is to determine the extents of that plume okay. if there is one okay. all right anyone here from the public to speak of this item today Seeing none, back to the commission. Um, I'll make a motion to adopt the findings and recommendations as stated in the staff report. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, let's call the roll. Keeper? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Perry? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Prop? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Ford? Aye. Hintz? Aye. Poitek? Aye. Motion carried 9-0. Moving on to item number two, a public hearing for a zone change from urban mixed use district to urban mixed use district with a planned development overlay for properties located at the 700 block of South Main Street. Do you have any site inspections for this one? Okay. We accept the staff report as part of the record. On to you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So this is a rezone request for a vacant parcel uh, located on South Main Street on the west side of South Main Street. Um, it actually is just one parcel. Um, these former parcels were combined. Um, the property has frontage on South Main Street, West 7th Avenue, and West 8th Avenue. Um, it's currently zoned UMU, urban, urban mixed use. And the surrounding area is mostly commercial and industrial uses, as well as a multifamily use to the south. And the 2040 comprehensive plan recommends center city use for the area. So here's an aerial view of the uh, subject site. Uh, this is an RDA property located in the Sawdust District. Um, the city is requesting to rezone the property to UMU PD. Um, so establishing that plan development overlay um, is being requested to help expedite redevelopment of the site. Um, currently there are no changes uh, being proposed to the site. Um, this overlay will allow for uh, flexibility of type of use and other zoning requirements to accommodate future needs for the site. And with that, uh, staff recommends approval of the zone change from UMU to UMU PD as requested. All right, thank you. Technical questions? 
Go ahead. Is there any specific project that prompted this change that we should have some foreknowledge of? Um, the RDA <coughs> did approve an option to a development group. Okay. Um, Andy Dumke, Cal Schultz, Tim Hess, Chet Wiesenberg uh, to construct uh, low income housing on that. They're going for some live tech tax credits right now. Okay. Um, so they do have an option on the property right now. Any idea of timeline, how long that would be until we see something on it? Uh, they're hoping to hear this spring uh, if they receive the credits. So okay. we'll know a little bit more then. If they don't receive the credits, they did indicate they'd potentially like to apply again. So the option may go into next year as well. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. April. Other tactical questions? Go ahead, Justin. Um, the phrase in here says flexibility of type of use and other zoning requirements to accommodate future needs. I'm just curious if there are specific examples. It doesn't have to be what ends up transpiring there, but specific examples of uh, what this change would allow um, versus what could take place currently. Right. Well, as Brian said, the Imagine Oshkosh, um, it has, does have a wide variety of uses. Um, some of it could be commercial, potentially residential in the back. Um, so something to support, you know, the um, entertainment district, uh, commercial, multifamily, um, something like that. Uh, I think the Imagine Oshkosh identified, and I think that's uh, within the, the center city land use that the comp plan rec recommends also. And the current plan, or the current zoning, uh, that doesn't allow that? I think it's just to prov provide just some PD. flexibility. It is a triple fronted lot too, so that does you know provide a little bit of a hardship there. So putting that PD overlay on um, kind of gives them some more options. Other tactical questions? Go ahead, John. Um, yeah, I'm going to ask something. It's not really pertaining to this, but I, it was brought up, so I want to ask it now. Is this the best site for low income housing when we're looking at an entertainment district? Just putting that out there. <laughs> well, the interesting thing about low income and what the thresholds are is Oshkosh's just market rate rents aren't that far off from low income. When people think low income, they think the the monthly rents are much lower, but they really aren't. So you're going to see um, a very nice low income facility. Um, I don't know. We probably don't have any slides of what was shown to the RDA and to council, but um, it is a very nice looking building. Uh, it's going to have underground parking. It's going to have really nice amenities, and it's going to offer um, additional housing um, options to folks. And just because it's low income, I mean, it's teachers, it's firefighters, that's a lot of different people that have a bill. So it. The, the group that is doing it, uh, they've done a really good job with other projects, so the city was pretty excited to see it. Thank you. Yep. Go ahead, Kath. Um, so this is not senior low-income housing. This is uh, any, anybody in the general population, Correct. including families? Correct. Okay, thank you. Yeah, as I understand it, there were <coughs> several three-bedrooms proposed in there this. There was a nice mix of three, two, one-bedrooms that they were proposing. Hmm. Cool. Any other technical questions, folks? Okay, seeing none, anybody from the, here from the audience to speak to this item today? <clears throat> All right, back to the commission. Have a motion, motion to adopt the findings and recommendations as stated in the staff report. Second. Second. Discussion? Can't wait to see the project. Yeah. Let's call the roll in. Amanda? Keeper? Aye. Palmieri? Aye. Perry? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Prop? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Ford? Aye. Hintz? Aye. Boytek? Aye. Motion carried 9-0. On to item number three, the general development plan and specific implementation plan approval for office and retail development at 1650-1660 Oshkosh Avenue. Site inspections? <coughs> right, we accept the staff report as part of the record. Thank you. So uh, this is a... Uh, they request for a GDP and SIP. The property is located at the northwest corner of Oshkosh Ave and Northwest Field Street. Um, last plan commission that came through for a rezone request, the property is currently split zone between SR2 and Corporate Business Park with a plan development overlay. So that rezone request is pending to make that entire parcel uh, Corporate Business Park with a plan development overlay. Uh, here's an aerial view of the site. So again, it's kind of an L-shaped lot here. Um, to the east, we have Parkland, and to the north, we have the Oshkosh uh, Corporation uh, Global Headquarters, and then to the west, we have the new Casey's General Store site. And here's uh, the proposed site plan. So this includes a two-story office building located at the northwest portion of the site. 
And then along Oshkosh Ave, we have a three tenant retail building, an associated um, drive through lane. And according to the applicant, the eastern um, tenant of that retail building will utilize the drive through lane and that will be um, occupied by, the, by a national coffee company. Uh, so the site will be accessed on both Oshkosh Avenue and North Westfield Street. The Oshkosh Avenue uh, access will be right in, right out only. The Northwestfield access will be shared with uh, the Casey's General st Store site. Um, they're also proposing to split the lot uh, right here to kind of separate those two uses. Um, that will require a cross access agreement. Um, so the site plan does meet setbacks for the Corporate Business Park District and also meets uh, parking requirements. Here is the landscape plan. So they're proposing um, more than double the amount of total landscaping points than code requires. Um, but for specific uh, landscaping requirements, uh, we do need to address some of those. Um, so one of those is the building foundation. So they're meeting that building foundation landscaping for the office building, um, but for the retail building, um, code requires 50% of the building foundation landscaping to be on the uh, side of the main entrance. Um, so they're showing, they're meeting that requirement on the south side instead of the side of the main entrance. And staff is supportive of a BSM to allow them to meet that requirement on the south side rather than the north side as that is the most visible uh, foundation from the street frontage. Um, as far as street frontage landscaping, uh, code requires 50% of the landscaping points to be located or to be medium trees. Um, along the Ashkosh frontage are showing uh, some large trees or overstory trees and then they're not showing any trees on the northwest field side. So we're asking them to kind of relocate um, some medium trees to both of those frontage to meet that 50% requirement. And along with that, in the uh, corporate business park, um, they're required 50% of their yard landscaping to be um, along the street frontages. So they will need to kind of relocate um, some landscaping to meet that requirement as well along those street frontages. Um, additionally, staff is recommending that they um, relocate some of their evergreen trees to um, the south side of that drive through lane to kind of create a buffer from, uh, from Oshkosh Avenue um, to kind of screen it from the drive through and stacking lane. Uh, for buffer yards, so the neighboring property is zoned institutional, which requires a 0.4 opacity buffer yard. They're pro providing a 10-foot wide buffer yard, which requires landscaping along with six-foot tall solid fencing. And they're proposing to not utilize six-foot tall solid fencing, um, but rather in, uh, increase their landscaping numbers. And they're showing about 174% of what's required for that uh, buffer yard. And staff is supportive of not requiring the six-foot solid fence as um, the neighboring use is a parkland use, um, so we don't see the need for that fencing. And that was something I believe that was discussed at a previous workshop. Um, as far as signage, they're proposing um, a monument sign along each frontage. Along Northwest Field Street, the, sign, the monument sign will meet uh, the 30-foot setback. However, along the Oshkosh Ave, they're proposing a 13-foot front yard setback, and that's because they're pretty much proposing to build out to that setback, leaving a little area um, that meets setback for the sign. So staff is supportive of that. Additionally, um, the Casey's General Store site uh, has a monument sign that's roughly the same setback uh, as being proposed here. Also, the monument signs will have signage for both the retail building and the office building, um, and they, those are will be on separate lots, so they are uh, requesting a base standard modification for um, off-premise signage, and staff is supportive of that as this basically it functions as one site, even though they're on separate parcels. Um, here's the lighting plan. It appears to be in compliance with city lighting standards with the possible exception of along the north property line. It's showing uh, 0.7 foot candles where the maximum at the property line is 0.5. So we just want to verify that they're not exceeding the 0.5 foot candles at the property line. And that can be addressed um, during the site plan review process. Here's the uh, drawing for the retail building. So they're uh, using um, brick and glass and here are the elevations. So they are showing 100% class one materials on all facades for the retail building. And also along the street facing facade, they're meeting the 40% door and window area requirement of the corporate business park. Here is the office building. Um, so they are requesting uh, class one uh, per percentage reductions in both the east and west 
facades as code requires 75% class one materials and they're showing 69% for both those facades. Um, however, they are increasing their class one materials on both the north and south elevations, um, which are the more prominent facades for the building. Um, so staff is supportive of that reduction for the east and west facades. Um, also, they're requesting um, a reduction of uh, door and window area on the street facing ground floor facade. Um, and that's this facade right here. Uh, so staff is supportive of that as there's a very large setback for this building from the street and there will be a lot of landscaping between the street and the building so that ground floor won't be extremely visible from the street. And also for the uh, building composition requirement, um, that kind of requires uh, the building elevations to um, have distinct floor levels and establish like a, a ground floor uh, building elevation. So staff is recommending an alternative uh, color for the bricks on the ground floor of the street facing facade, which would be the uh, south elevation. So just um, kind of a change in, in color of bricks along that ground floor to distinguish the ground floor. So overall, um, staff is supportive of the proposed base standard <coughs> modifications as they are um, significantly, significantly increasing the uh, landscaping on the site over what's required for points. Um, so we feel that that does offset those base standard modifications. And with that, uh, staff recommends approval of the GDP and SIP with the findings in your staff report and the conditions uh, listed in your staff report. All right, thank you, sir. Technical questions, John. Um, <clears throat> being that the north and south elevations are significantly larger <laughs> and higher as far as their class one materials. Do you have a, a number or a rough number of what the total would be for the building as a whole? For class one? For class I one? think it said 75% in the... Uh, yeah, it did. Did it? I, I, couldn't yeah. find, I couldn't remember seeing it. That's why I was... I think, yeah, that's why they So it actually comes out to 75% yep. for, yeah. the yeah. for the entire building? the entire building. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, that would be a good selling point for us also. Just <laughs> throw that out there right away because that way it shows that they are actually doing it in the building. So Here? Just a quick question. <clears throat> I'm not familiar with the term interstate commercial um, in our comprehensive plan. What is that, if I could ask? I believe that's adjusted for land uses that are specifically along the interstate highway. Oh, okay. I just hadn't seen it before. Thanks. Other technical questions? Justin. Um, the, the row in front of the building, um, that is con not on this map, but on the... Um, you go back to the with the street. The one, yeah, so right there, any of those work. So is that a, is that the sidewalk that would be along Oshkosh Avenue there in front that cut that the entrance cuts across? Yes. So, and th that uh, the Westfield Street is considered to be some sort of I don't know main what? access or one of many or several main access um, points for the park. Correct. It'll be, it'll be one of two, either Keller uh, or North Westfield. Is for those right in and right out, is there signage that's required for um, just pedestrian safety or, um, you know, I, I can just envision people biking along the sidewalk there, not wanting to bike on Oshkosh Ave, and you have the, the people coming in with the right in and right out not paying attention. Um, not that it's a deal breaker for the project, but right. it'd be nice to have some sort of pedestrian safety signage or... Right. No, that's a good point. And something else we're doing to try to, not to bring people off of Oshkosh Ave, but we, as part of the park plan, they are looking at having a trail kind of go along the north side of their property that's kind of intertwined with all the park trails and then have that hook up then to a trail um, that um, will go um, towards the west. So there could be a couple options, but yes, there could be some signage just, you know, to let people, you know, be aware. And there will be signage for uh, the drivers also. Sure. And uh, I mean, I did, thought maybe I would ask um, Steve or whoever would be here, but maybe you know as well. I, I can envision people utilizing the park and then biking over to the coffee shop. Mm -hmm. And um, part of the overall plan for this project was that it was um, supportive of pedestrian traffic or alternative modes of traffic. And so I was curious if they were incorporating any sort of you know bicycle infrastructure or you know even just bicycle racks for encouraging folks to comfortably utilize those facilities as well. Yep, they are required to have a bike rack um, per code. So each, um, the office, the um, retail center, they all will need to have a bike rack provided. Nice. Thank you. Yep. Other technical questions? Go ahead. Is please. there currently a bus stop 
along there. I don't remember. Um, it's down in front of Robbins, I believe the bus stop is. I'm looking Rob- back because when we did Robbins, Robbins doesn't exist. Yolo, Yolo, Yolo okay. Robbins. <laughs> but yeah, cool. so just on the other side of Northwest Hill, then I believe there's one across on, right in front of Davis on the south side. There's a bus stop there, so there's definitely two in the neighborhood that go either way. Other technical questions, folks. Go ahead, Kathy. Um, I think I know. Yeah, that's what I wanted to look at. The the, the drive-through U-shape street in the center there is landscaping. In that, yeah, that oval. Yeah, yeah that looks yeah, like there's some landscaping. Big trees. landscaping there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Anyone here from the public to speak to this item today, Mr. Oopman? <coughs> Uh, 5105 I made uh, don't have any comments I'm just sure if anybody has any questions any questions for the developer so the bike bypass trail that you referenced Kelly to the north is that on this site or still part of the park? park land it would be on park land okay. just to the north of the yep. property line yeah that's we've been working with parks director Maurer on that as part of the park land other questions for the petitioner go ahead Justin um, did these projects also <coughs> incorporate uh, focus on energy uh, through Wisconsin? I yeah, know the I other mean, one. All had the all the energy codes now, you know, today with uh, the architectural, you know, drawings have to meet a certain standard and so forth. Yeah. So, um, I mean, and, and with the uh, with the lights actually on one of the the main or the second floor of the office building, uh, it's written into their lease as to the uh, energy efficient lighting systems. Sure. Anything with water conservation or, or the EPA as a water sense program, is that that's kind of a standard? Just the toilets and stuff again. You know, I mean, typically Wisconsin standards are now at a point where, you know, you've got pretty much conservation measures taken into everything. So, Got it. And then just, well, I don't think they were sure with the other one, but any sort of um, focus on recycled materials or um, I guess regional source materials which is typically like 500 miles I mean is there any sort of mm. you know you do a lot of this stuff and so I'm just curious if it's something that is in yeah not really no yeah. other questions go ahead Kath yeah. are you supportive of the cha- minor changes that the staff made yeah I don't see any issues with them at all so yeah. in the conditions yeah no okay no. great other questions for Mr. Hoopman all right, thank you, sir. Anyone else here to speak to this item today? Seeing none, back to the commission. Motion to adopt the findings and recommendations as stated in the staff report. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Go ahead, John, and then Michael. Um, I I just like to say thank you to the developer. Um, I know we've been working hard with workshops and everything on this, and um, a lot of our a lot of our input has been taken. To heart and it and we can see it on this paper especially with the landscaping the way that the drive-through is set up and whatnot so just want to say again for people who think it's hard to work in Oshkosh we have a staff who's working with developers and we have a, a plan commission who's working with developers so it's good and great to see yeah Michael yeah no I, I agree with that I think it's the, with the office building in, in particular I think it's a good example of our type 1 material uh, ordinance or whatever we call it working as uh, as it should I mean they've demonstrated with the landscaping the overall 75 percent and having well literally a building between the street and uh, the office building they've demonstrated that the intent of that, uh, that piece of uh, yeah policy so good other thoughts before we vote all right let's vote Kiefer aye Paul Mary aye Harry aye Mitchell aye Prop. Aye. Erickson? Aye. Ford? Aye. Hintz? Aye. Poitek? Aye. Motion carried 9-0. Okay, that's the end of business. We do have workshops. Just a reminder. Motion to adjourn. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, on to workshops. See, I didn't.